a conversation not about culture per se. In order for Ukraine to thrive culturally, it needs to build a strong state. For this, a major economic overhaul is needed. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, currently headed by Sir Suma Chakrabarti, has invested over 10 billion euros to date for hundreds of projects in Ukraine, with another 5 billion euros in its current portfolio of projects. And Sir Suma is in Toronto today to discuss this work and to present his thoughts on Ukraine. The law must be used and the system must be cleaned up. Government structures need to improve and regulatory and supervisory powers need to be strengthened. The system needs to be opened up to real, real competition. So Ukraine needs to move quickly and deliver results in these really significant areas and restore fiscal discipline at the same time. And I do believe if it does that, investors will respond and should respond. BBRD is currently the largest single investor in Ukraine, and we will be leading the way, I can be sure of that. But I'd like it if other investors joined us and we're not still uh, leading the way on our own. It's very important to get other investors into Ukraine. Yeah, I believe we're well placed as any other entity to help Ukraine through these difficult times and help Ukraine re-energize transition to a more advanced economy and, very importantly, to a more modern form of politics. is Ukraine's economic stability for Eastern Europe or even all of Europe? I think yeah, Ukraine's economic and political stability is very important for Europe generally. Uh, Ukraine is a sovereign nation, a very important nation, a very important economy actually in that region. So of course we need Ukraine to become economically very much more stable because that will help growth in the region more generally. I mean, Ukraine has many resources, for example its agriculture, which is fundamental to the region. It's also actually fundamental to food security globally. So it's absolutely vital that Ukraine becomes an economically stable and more prosperous economy. What is Ukraine's comparative advantage in the region, in addition to what you've already mentioned? Well, it has enormously skilled manpower in certain sectors. Uh, Agribusiness we all know about, everyone talks about Ukraine's agricultural potential. But I've been hearing from others as well about the information technology se sector as well where there are many very talented Ukrainians and actually some Western companies have been working with them but we need to get more investment into those regions too. So I think there's a number of areas where Ukraine could uh, exploit its comparative advantage. And could you tell me a little bit about your organization's commitment to the cleanup of the Chernobyl mm -hmm. nuclear site? Well we have been uh, fundamental I think to the cleanup of the site. We've managed the project funds of course for the cleanup of the Chernobyl uh, site but we've also been a major, major financier of the cleanup. Over the years, we've, uh, I think, now produced nearly 700 million euros of investment as part of the cleanup. Uh, this is the largest share of, in fact, the funding of the cleanup. And we are committed to making sure this project is a successful one. And just as a side note, uh, how far along are you as far as the cleanup is going? We're a couple of years away now from finishing the whole project, um, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think obviously it's a very complex project mm -hmm. and you will need to get it right, technically right as well. But I think we're not far away from the finish. And what sorts of uh, initiatives are viable for Eastern Europe right now during this time of strife there? Well, the key thing in Eastern Europe very much is to try and re-energize transition across the region. So for many years, in the first 15 years or so after the Berlin Wall fell, of course, Eastern Europe did really, really well. I mean, it did all the reforms that were the first generation reforms, if you like. And Eastern Europe grew very well. Then the financial crisis came. It became much more difficult to tackle the second generation uh, tough reforms. And that's where now Eastern Europe needs to really move forward on. So Ukraine is just one example of that, but that's a general issue of re-energizing transition to try and do the things that would have the right policies in place, have more competition, for example, to have the right institutions in place, the right sort of judicial systems, court systems that would really attract uh, investors into those countries. So building a better investment climate across uh, many of these countries too. And of course, having the right politics, having leadership that really thinks about the national interest, not necessarily the party interest. Of course, that requires our leaders in Eastern Europe to think about long-term perspective too, because this is a long-term issue. Transition is not a short-term uh, process. It takes a long, long uh, period to get it right. Russia is Ukraine's largest trading partner. 
Given the hostility of the Kremlin toward Ukraine, do you think that Ukraine needs to reduce its trade relations with Russia in order to thrive? And is this even possible right now? There is one uh, fundamental uh, lesson for every single country, whether it's Ukraine or Albania or any other country. It is to diversify your economic base, diversify your trading links. You know, it's not just a question of political relationships which can change and become difficult or become good. It's also a question of prices. Uh, some prices will move up in some sectors and other prices will move down. And right now for Russia, because it hasn't diversified its economy enough away from just oil and gas, it is suffering a, a severe slowdown, partly because of sanctions, but partly because its dependence on oil and the oil price going down. Same for Ukraine, it needs to diversify its trading partners. So Russia will always remain an important trading partner for, for Ukraine. Well, EU is the second largest trading Absolutely. partner. Absolutely, and that's, that's a good thing that the, in, the, in the case of Ukraine, that the EU economy is recovering, uh, that the Eurozone is recovering, that Central Europe and the Baltic states particularly are recovering well, 3% uh, forecast growth this year by our institution. So I think that's a good thing, but Ukraine also will need to look at investors around the globe, not just Europe, not just Russia. So is the nature of your organization's work in alignment with Amartya Sen's view that rapid economic growth and not austerity measures are the key to deficit reduction? Well, I think uh, if you have a very large deficit, of course, uh, my institution believes you need to tackle that. You need to get your sort of debt levels down to uh, an acceptable level. Um, I think that doesn't mean, of course, that you shouldn't at the same time undertake reforms, structural reforms, that will really help your growth uh, in the longer term. So. In a way, we like to believe both that you have to control your deficit, make sure it's uh, manageable, but at the same time, you have to pursue the sort of Amartya Sen-like prescription, which is to have structural reforms that really push growth going forward. What kind of initiatives are viable for Eastern Ukraine uh, during this time of strife there? Well, it's impossible for an EBRD to obviously work in Eastern Ukraine during the conflict uh, period. That's not possible. But the key thing is that one day, I hope, we all hope, that this conflict will end. So the question is, can we, the international community, working with Ukraine, with others, can we actually think about how, what we would have to do to reconstruct eastern Ukraine after the conflict? Because a lot of investment is going to be required to bring that part of the economy and bring that society together again. And I think we in EBRD will have a role to play as part of that. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak with you. I firmly believe that, as the anthem apparently goes on to say, fate shall smile once more on the modern prosperous Ukraine nation. Ukraine is doing its bit. So must all of those like EBRD who believe in the cause of transition. Thank you very much for listening.